Now, folklore and mythology may be completely separate from each other, but they do share a few similarities. Oftentimes, various pieces of local folklore will merge together to become a mythology, and sometimes pieces of older mythologies will find their way into local folklore. Today we're looking at a piece of folklore from the Scottish Highlands, one of the most beautiful places on planet Earth. We're talking about a kindly fae who watches over the forest and helps children who are lost within it. <laughs> By now, you all know the drill. We need to get a little bit bigger before I can grab a sponsorship from Raid Shadow Legends. Before then, however, you can still support me. In fact, you can gain access to all of these videos 48 hours early by becoming a patron on Patreon. I also have a book out on Amazon that you can buy on Amazon. And I also have a merch store where you can wear my moustache if, if you're that way inclined. Links to all in the description. Before we go on, don't forget the easiest way to support me is to simply like, subscribe, share, and tap that bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload. Now on with the video. <music> Fae, fairy, she, and fair folk are all essentially describing the same thing. Each of these is a sort of catch-all term that describes any magical spirits or mystical beings with otherworldly powers. In the realm of the she in Scottish folklore, it is said that there's a large fey court populated by all manner of beings. Now, allegedly at some point, a member of this court was actually banished by the queen of the fey. That court member being the Gilly Do. He then came to our world, or he returned. We'll circle back to that later. Uh, as usual, I am going to apologise ahead of time um, for my pronunciations. Um, yeah, sorry. I'll try my best. He'd gone to live in a birchwood near Gaelock in the Loch Throwing area of the northwest highlands of Scotland, around two miles away from the Rear Reed Lighthouse in Wester Ross. To be honest, it makes sense that the Gilly Doo would live in a birchwood because the birch is said to be his favourite tree. From what I was able to find, the Gilly Doo appeared in the latter part of the 19th century. He was also either a nature fae, a male mountain spirit, or a fairy. Now, as much as one day I would love to travel up to the Scottish Highlands and hunt for the Gilly Doo just to see if he's still hanging about, there's actually a real possibility that the area he once allegedly lived in has been deforested. Which is ironic because the Gilly Doo is said to be a guardian of the forests and he had a special hatred for adult humans, mainly because whenever they rocked up, they came to take from the forests, either hunting wildlife or cutting down trees. In some towns, if the Gilly Doo caught you walking through the forest at night, he would grab you with his long arms, squeezing you and eventually imprisoning you. Forever. It is also alleged that the Gilly Doo would crush your body into chunks of meat, then converting these chunks of meat into compost to help the forest grow. Now, the Gilly Doo's protective nature of the forest actually allows for a fairly easy comparison to the Leshy of Slavic mythology. Although it is said that the Gilly Doo was always kind to children, helping them find their way home if they were ever lost in the forest late at night. Now, today, the Gilly Doo would be seen as a master survivalist, gathering everything he needed from the forest. His clothes were made from sewn together oak leaves for his trousers, a large acorn cup for his hat, bark fashioned into shoes, and the rest of his clothes were made from lichen and moss. The Gilly Doo also had dark hair and was purportedly around three feet tall. This description is pretty much summed up in his name, with Gilly being the English translation of the Scottish Gaelic word Gilly. At least it looks like it's pronounced Gilly to me. I may be way off base, and if so, I am sorry. <laughs> this means lad, youth, or boy, according to Scottish lexicographer Edward Dwelly. The word do is the English version of the word do, which I, I, I hope is just different spellings and the same pronunciation, and if not, again, I am sorry. But this means dark or dark-haired. This all comes together to mean dark-haired lad. <laughs> This is the story all about how my life got turned upside down. 
It's actually the story of Jesse McRae and the Gilly Doo, first collected in the Wonder Tales from Scottish Myth and Legend by Donald Alexander Mackenzie, first being published in 1917. There once was a fairy who lived in a wood in the Gaelic in Rochere. He was called the Gilly Doo, which means dark servant, because he had dark hair and dark eyes. His clothes were made of leaves and spun moss. Nobody feared him, for he never did anyone any harm. One day, a little girl, whose name was Jessie McCree, was walking through the wood and lost her way. It was a summer's day and the air was warm and bright, so Jessie did not worry. But as twilight fell, she began to grow afraid and hastened her steps. Try as she might, she could not find her way out of the wood. She was tired and her feet hurt, and she slumped down below a fir tree and began to cry. A voice from behind the tree spoke suddenly and asked, Why are you crying, little girl? Jessie quickly spun around and saw a tiny little man. His hair was as black as the wing of a raven, and his pink apple cheeks had merry dimples. His eyes were as brown as hazelnuts in September, and they gazed back at her soft and kindly. Why are you crying? the gilly Doo asked again. Your teardrops are falling like rain on the wee blue flowers at your feet. I have lost my way, said Jessie, and the night is coming on, and I don't know how to get home. Don't cry, little girl, the gilly Doo said kindly. I shall lead you through the wood. I know all the paths. The rabbit's path, the hare's path, the fox's path, the goat's path, the path of the deer, and the path of men. Where do you dwell? Jessie told him, and he said, You've been walking every way but the right way. Follow me, and you'll reach home before the stars come out to peer at us through the trees. The gilly Doo turned round about and walked off. He went so fast that Jessie feared she would lose sight of him with his turning round again and again, but if he found that she was far behind, he danced, a pretty danced, until she came up to him. Then he scampered off as before. After some time, they reached the edge of the wood, and Jessie saw her home beside the lock. The gilly Doo bade her goodbye and said, Have I not led you well? Do not forget me. I am the gilly Doo." And I love the company of little boys and girls. If ever you get lost in the wood again, call on me and I shall come to your aid. Goodbye, little girl. Goodbye. Goodbye, Gilly Doo, Jessie called as she waved to him as he trotted merrily into the wood and was soon lost to her sight amongst the trees. There is an alternative goodbye from the Gilly Doo that's a little less loving of little boys and girls. <laughs> I am the Gilly Doo, the dark-haired servant of the forest. If you are ever lost again, I shall come to your aid. Now, I bid you farewell. After Jessie returned home and told of the Gilly Doo, a hunt was called by the landowner, Sir Hector Mackenzie of Gerlock. A team of five hunters traipsed through the woodland all night long, but alas, their prey evaded them. The Gilly Doo had seemingly vanished, and in fact, was never seen again. In other versions of the story, Jessie stayed with the Gilly Doo until sunrise and had a long and thoughtful conversation. What they spoke about is a complete mystery because the Gilly Doo never spoke to anyone else, and Jessie never revealed their conversation. After sunrise, the Gilly Doo led Jessie to the edge of the forest, and from here, she found her way home. Just as before, Jesse tells the story of meeting the Gilly Doo and how he helped her out of the forest, and this makes its way back to the landowner, Sir Hector Mackenzie of Gerlock. He then forms a group of Mackenzie dignitaries to hunt down the Gilly Doo. They meet in one of the buildings of his tenants and have a hot meal before setting out. However, once they enter the woods, again, they find nothing. The, the Gilly Doo just has vanished. Now, to give them credit, and they may have had a good reason to want to hunt the Gilly Doo. You see, the Gilly Doo, being a member of the Fae, was seen as a bad omen. This was because everyone was very superstitious, and nearly every story where the Fae are involved, it doesn't end well for the humans. So, superstition probably played a big part in this. There's also a chance that the negative stories we hear about the Gilly Doo would be from people trying to get other people on their side in hunting it. So, yeah. Because as you can tell from when I read that first story, the Gilly Doo seems very nice and everyone seemed to like him. 
slight tangent there. Now, as with many folk tales, there are different versions of the story of Jesse McRae and the Gilly Doo, and some of these lean more into the magical, mystical elements of folk tales, and one of these versions you can find on the Gerlock Museum's YouTube channel, narrated by Sam Hughan. I was going to summarise it here, but I feel like it does it more justice if you actually go and see it and, and listen to it in verse as it's, as it's meant to be. So, yeah, go and do that. Finish this first, and then and then like go and do it. Or pause this and go into a separate tab. I'm I'm not your boss. Now there are a couple theories as to why the Gilly Doo has such a love for children. One of which being that he himself was a young child who got lost in the woods. The young boy would be lost for many days and nights until the spirits of the forest took pity on him. They gave him berries and nuts, after which the thankful child was taken back to the realm of the Fae, where he fell in love with the dark forests of Scotland. However, he was not a true Fae, and so the Queen of the Fae exiled him and he returned to our world, where he repaid his debt to the forest by tending to it. The Gilly Doo would then grow a hatred for the greed of adult humans as they ravaged his forest home. Yet, his time spent lost as a young boy gave him a connection to any children lost in the woods. He would take pity on these children much as the spirits of the forest had when he was a young boy, kindly showing them the way home. The other hypothesis being that he was simply just a guardian of the forests and woods defending against the greed of man, yet even he could see the innocence of children. Now we take a little bit of a look into history. You see, during the Second Boer War, the Scottish Highland Regiment, formed by the 14th Lord Lovett Simon Joseph Fraser and known as the Lovett Scouts, would be the first to use a slightly different type of camouflage, possibly based off the ghillie do. In fact, you probably know it as the ghillie suit. The scout unit was comprised of estate workers and gamekeepers from the Scottish Highlands. Described by the first Earl Roberts, Frederick Roberts, as half wolf, half jackrabbit. Which is an interesting description. In fact, in 1916, they would become the British Army's first sniper unit, known at the time as sharpshooters. Now, this is the part of the mythology videos where I say, do I believe in it? And I give you the evidence and I also give you a little bit of debunking. And I leave the answer up to you. However, in this case, given a description of the ghillie doo, it is easily possible that the origins of the folktale were just a little person who was shunned by their local community, so they went, F this, I'm going to go and live in the forest as a hermit. And of course, if you've been shunned by your local community and you find a lost child in the woods, you're probably going to relate to that feeling of loneliness and you're probably going to help them out of the woods. And then when you see a bunch of people come to hunt you down, you're probably going to get out of there and you're going to know the woods better than them, so you're going to be able to evade them. Now, the idea of hermits is nothing new. In fact, it goes all the way back throughout history, and we even have hermits living all around the world today. For the most part, they're just trying to escape the Industrial Revolution and its consequences. When talking about mythology and folklore, I always leave it up to you guys at home whether or not you believe the story, and I never give my input, but I'm going to break tradition slightly here and saying I don't think the story of the Gilly Do, at least the less magical versions, are that far-fetched. The idea of a hermit seeing a lost child and helping them get home and then a short time later seeing a bunch of people hunting them and getting out of there isn't that far-fetched. And as I just said, the Ghillie Doo would have known the forest and woods better than anyone because they lived there. So they just may not have even run away, they may have just hid in a bush somewhere and <laughs> let everyone ran past them. As for whether or not I believe the Ghillie Doo is a member of the Fae, I can't give you everything. Whether or not you believe the Ghillie Doo is a member of the Fae is entirely up to you. I must quickly add, if you do believe the Ghillie Doo is a member of the Fae, I really do not recommend you go out and look for more members of the Fae to make friends with. Because they probably don't want to be friends. And if you've read many folk tales, you know it normally doesn't end well for the human in the story. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if I missed anything or if I just got anything wrong. And let me know of any beings from mythology and folklore that you'd like me to talk about in the future. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and tap that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.